this is Stephen Zucker and Beth Harris with Richard Bowen, art historian and, or other historian, <laughs> in Rome at uh, Santa Prisada. So we're, walk, we're walking down the side street, and what's interesting is that you have really no sense that you're about to walk into a major church. We come through our courtyard and we come into a church. That's the thing that grabs our attention most of the beautiful 9th century mosaics of which this church is rightly famous for. It, it's completely laden with the decorative, the jewel-like mm -hmm. colors in the apse are just stunning. And I think you'll find that many medieval churches tend to have this way of trying to draw you to the high altar here okay, with the apse of which you will have great theological moments happening. St. Praxedes or San, Santa Presede, she and her sister St. Pudenziana were daughters of a gentleman here in Rome of the first century AD, St. Pudens, who is actually mentioned in the Bible. So they are ascribed, if you like, here to the earliest times of Christianity here in Rome. But by tradition, they're, they're understood to be martyrs. They're not only martyrs, but also those that helped the Christian community here ah. from at least the second half of the first century AD. I would imagine that the mosaics are actually quite old. Yes. Um, and do, do, those are ninth century. Those are, those so, ninth century. So, so those are ninth century. And maybe we ought to start with, with the apse mosaic. Shall we go closer to okay. the apse mosaic so we don't upset this? What we got here in the apse is we've got our central figure here of Jesus Christ. And then we have the heavens at the top here with God's hand coming down here with a, with a, with the a crown. The hand of God. The hand of God. Fabulous, yes. There. Then we've got this river behind, which is the River Jordan, of which Jesus Christ was baptized. And then here we've got some very interesting saints over here to our left. We've got St. Paul, who has his hand around St. Praxedes yes. uh, here. <laughs> okay. Embracing her. Embracing yeah. her. But and also, introducing and her to Jesus. Exactly, introducing her to, to Jesus. And then the bit that probably is the thing that is the crown in glory in many ways, of this apse mosaic is we have Paschal the first here. Yeah. And but is he presenting the church he's himself? He's presenting the church himself, but not only that, he also see has a square halo. Yes. yes. Now this is very, very rare in Christian iconography because what you see here is a saint still alive at the time of his depiction. So had he been canonized? He's been canonized. Okay. It, it was one of the perks of the job. Then we've got the palm here, which can be a symbol of paradise and also of martyrdom. Then we've got this little phoenix here, which is obviously a symbol yes. here of the resurrection, as well as also the peacock can be a symbol of resurrection as okay. well. So, and resurrection is something within Christianity is of the utmost importance. Absolutely. Perhaps today in the 21st century we tend to forget the importance that the resurrection plays, certainly within Christianity uh, here. And if you think that probably people who came to this church in the 9th century AD may not have lived beyond the age of 40 or 45, exactly. then the idea of a better life afterwards is of the utmost and That's right, importance. because death was a far more immediate experience. Yes. Exactly. And then there's this marvelous row of lamb. These are the lambs here. They're coming out of the two holy cities of Jerusalem and Bethlehem. And these are sort of like representative, if you like, here the of the of the or, or the apostles, or okay, the and of course, like Jesus, the Lamb of God, if no. you like, yes. So you have this symbolism here: Jesus not only being pastor but, and, and the shepherd, but also the flock of the faithful, if yes. you like. And uh, of there. course, I noticed right above Pascal's yes. name. Pascal's we name. We have yeah. a lamb on an altar. That's right. Yes. And a medallion above. And and and, and, the ch and the cross, and almost like the chair waiting for the second coming. And then, of course, obviously, you've got these angels here, and then you've got the candles, the seven candles. And I see the evangelist. The evangelists in the corner as well. The symbols of the evangelists. That's right. And then the elders of the apocalypse here. Have to bear in mind, this is a Byzantine style yeah. of art. In some ways, it's quite flat in some of the mosaics oh, it's that we're going to see. Incredibly flat. Which I quite like, to be honest. With you. I oh, it's love beautiful. It. And the references, for instance, to the folds of the cloth mm -hmm. are, uh, are, are yeah. really, yeah, it's just tradition. Yeah. It's just, just lines. But yeah. my favorite part is always when I look at Byzantine mosaics like this or in that, are those feet mm -hmm. that seem to sort of dangle down That's and don't right. really seem to have contact with the earth. You That's know, right. these are kind yeah. of floating and, ethereal and that's the, figures. That's the critical issue. Here's the, really a kind of really direct rejection of so much of what's the, around us of, here that's in right, of, of, of the, the classical. That's right, mm -hmm. of the pre-Christian. Mm -hmm. and, and to see it in this context really makes sense, a kind of reinvention and, and a kind of abstraction of the physical. Right. The, the artificial lights went off just a moment ago, and the ambient light from the sky coming in from the windows from the nave were illuminating glass tiles mm -hmm. beautifully, and the gold was incredibly mm -hmm. reflective, and the spirituality is so powerful. Different.